Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a play-by-play -play commentator or a sports analyst color commentator? Look no further, this episode's for you. Randy Silver here with episode number 18 of Becoming a Sportscaster vlog series. I'm taking you through a day in the life of being a play-by-play -play commentator. As a student at the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting, we have the opportunity to be the voice of Rollins College. They're a D2 NCA college here in Winter Park. So I'm gonna take you through the prep work we do for the games. I have highlights of me commentating games and so much more. So any thought you have about play-by-play, -play, sports commentary, being at the Dan Patrick School, my journey to become a sportscaster and so much more, this is a fun, fantastic episode for you. Without further ado, enjoy y'all. In the fall, the three sports we call is women's volleyball, men's soccer, women's soccer. To get the opportunity to call Rollins sports games, you have to be at least three months into the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting, done with intro sportscasting, which you saw in my vlog video last week, and you have to go through a sportscasting seminar to make sure you're ready to go. I got scheduled for my first game, which was a women's volleyball game. You can see what I'm doing. I go through all the history of the team they're playing, so their opponent, themselves. You go through player stats, so you can have everything updated, creating a game board that you see right here. So that way you can look at these during the game and tell the story. I like to take it a step deeper as well and try to find out stuff from their social media or other public places so I can tell a little bit about the individual and not just say X player did this, number player did this. We also got to meet with coach Micah Robinson before the season. So we had notes about her and the team and their preparation. So it's great stuff there for us to be able to utilize. I also go to the conference website to be able to find stats about national rankings, conference rankings, which helps me just paint a bigger story and put imagery to what you're seeing on the court. A common question I get is, where are you getting the live stats from? There's a statistician at the game who's recording them and for the game website, you can log in, you can see box score, highlights, key plays, leaderboard, so much more. So using the live stats, plus my pre-work on the game board, my buying of information, helps me paint the picture and the story of what's happening on the court. So going here in the stands, being able to practice looking up, looking down, making sure I'm actually watching the game, not just looking at my boards and my computer the whole time, is key. As someone who's never done play by play before, besides on my own on the couch, this really was important for me. And you can see here, I use highlighter to highlight the key players. I can use pen on my notes to write down notes. And I have so much information there. I learned I actually had too much information. So I needed to uh, have less. So that way I was focusing on the game more, not flipping through my pages and pages and pages to try to find the story. Let the game tell the story. And then if something comes up and there's some downtime, I can use the stats that I have. Mom and dad go back to school, part two. Got my backpack on. We're at Rollins College. You all saw me do the volleyball game, practice play by play. Now we're going to the men's soccer game, or the women's volleyball game, excuse me. Go to the men's soccer game, get practice play by play, on my game board, hang out. Rollins is a really good team, ranked in the nation, the Plain Florida Tech, ranked in the nation as well, NCAA double A, Division two. So let's see how this game goes. I'll give you some clips of the game board. Soccer is my favorite sport, as I said on my channel many times. I want to work in soccer when I graduate. So coming here, one, I'd be watching this game anyways, but two, being able to hone my craft and commentating and watch Rollins play is a win-win. Did he get it? Oh, what a save. What a save. So here I am, game's on. Florida Tech versus Rollins, commentating the game. I have my game board. Not as intensive as the volleyball one. I didn't have as much time. I didn't know I was doing soccer yet, so I didn't want to go super into it. But what was essential? Stats on the team, the players. Using my computer next to me, I get the game stats. There's no analyst with me, so commentate the game for 90 minutes. How do I tell stories and how do I make it engaging for the fans? What's up y'all, it's Friday evening, 6.30 p.m. Have my volleyball game board. We're at the Rollins Gymnasium. We're gonna watch the game today because we call the game tomorrow. Purpose of today, what's the lessons we want? 
understand what it's like to be there from the commentator side, get a feel of it for it, watch my peers who are doing it today, I understand what they're doing, how they're doing it, so I can get a feel for what they're doing, and do a dry run through. So tomorrow we're ready to rock and roll. Let's get it. We're at the spot where we commentate games. Earlier in the video, you saw me in the stand. So the commentator is on the opposite side. You have a bird's eye view, which is nice. It lets you see the full action. You have a monitor there where replay can happen. And of course, you have your headset on that helps you drown out the background noise and you can focus on commentating. My partner for the game tomorrow was there, Ethan. So we sat to the side, called a couple sets on our own, talked strategy, and prepare ourselves to be ready to go. I arrived at the arena about an hour and four or five minutes before the match started. We need to do pre-game interviews with the coaches, any final prep work, watch the pre-game warmups, things like that. My beautiful and amazing girlfriend, Mary, took a couple of photos of me before I entered the arena. I've been dreaming about this day for years working my tail off to make this day happen. So this one to come at the moment, I appreciate it. Here we are at the announcer's booth. The camera's on the right. We're right here setting up. We have the replay. A couple of my peers from school are there as well. And we're ready to go. About 30 minutes before the game's about to start, pumped up, supporting each other. Really, really excited. You've seen the lay of the land, all the prep work that goes into it. All the hustle, now it's time for the performance. Let's show you some highlights. Winter Park, Florida, as the women's Rollins Tars volleyball team sporting a seven and six record. upset over Lynn University, a team that received votes to be in the top 25. Randy, what were some keys to the win? We spoke to Coach Micah Robinson pregame. She said there were two big keys in that victory, service and blocking. Let's start with service. They were forcing tough digs that made Lynn Sether have to only pass to their one option or do a back set. As a result, of that, they were able to block phenomenally. This was a key emphasis of Coach Micah during the practice this week. She said, just coming into this game, Rollins was third in the conference with 260 unforced errors, while Barry was sixth in the conference with 210. So one of the keys of today's game is gonna be who will have the least unforced errors? We saw last night Rollins really did a good job at keeping the ball in play, and that led them to keeping the game close and being ahead versus playing from behind as we saw in previous matches. There's another point for Emily Diaz. You mentioned Akapova. Let's talk about her for a second. Last season, she played in all 34 matches for Barry. And listen to these stats. She had 672 kills, which led D2. 753 points, and she averaged six kills a set, which is just a crazy high number. And there's another great serve. Goes off the hands awkwardly into the stands. Talking to Horsley. Yeah. Well, one thing to make note of here is in this set, Barry's hitting 529 while Rollins is hitting 238. In set two, when we threw it down to Conrad, he talked about Barry was hitting above 500% while Rollins was hitting below 100%. So this is something that we need to continue to key point on because it's really important that Rollins' defense is either A, blocking at the net, or B, digging. And right now, Bear is getting an advantage by not getting blocked and they're pinpointing it on the court to get the points. For now, we'll go back, back down to Conrad. Conrad back line to take this serve. Troutman. And that's gonna be go back out, out of bounds. And that is the match. Rollins wins it. Three sets to one. Rollins wins set four, 25 to 19. Taking both games at home this weekend. Yesterday against Lynn, they straight swept in three sets. Today, it took four sets, won three sets to one. Ron Tars over Barry. The record will now be eight and six, which eclipses their win total from last year. So already this season's been a big improvement for this program. Emily Diaz chipped in with 14 kills. You have to say Natalie Hortley setting. She had 50 assists on the day, chipped in eight digs. Adrian Lopez at Libero had 10 digs for Rollins. If we, let's talk about some team comparisons here and we will get a post-match interview as well, so please do not leave. We have much more here on the network for you. When we look at the team stats, Rollins had 151 kills, excuse me, attacks to, to Barry's 133. 
total kills, Rollins had 56 to Barry's 55. Very even there. When we look at errors, 23 to Barry to 20 to Rollins. When the sets are very close like that, one, two, three point sets, a couple errors here and there really make the difference in tied momentum and being able to serve versus having to side out. Now I'm gonna show you the women's soccer commentary. When we're done with women's soccer, we'll do the highs and lows of both matches and what I learned. What up y'all? We're here at Rollins College, commentating my second game live on the stream, women's soccer. Rollins versus Nova Southeastern. Should be a fun game. Both teams are competing for a playoff spot. A couple games left in the season. So let's go through it, baby. Woo! First game was volleyball. Now we get a soccer game, my favorite sport. We're in the commentary booth. Have my game board, have my notebook of player information. Look at that view. Of course, have my computer so I can get the live stats as they're updated throughout the game. Just so blessed and humbled to have this opportunity provided by Dan Patrick and by Rollins to call games. Once the game got going, this is how I had everything situated. Game board on the left, my notebook on the bottom, live stats on the right, and could see the field and scan down if I needed to. I called the game with my classmate Noah. The day before the game, we met for an hour, talked about pregame, storylines we want to talk about, everything to make sure we're prepared. Of course, got there an hour and a half early for the same purpose. You've seen the lay of the land, all the prep work that goes into it, all the hustle. Now it's time for the performance. Let's show you some highlights. Welcome to the Sunshine State Conference Network. I am Randy Silver here at Cow Hill Sandspur Field on Rollins campus in beautiful Winter Park, Florida. We're in for a treat today. We have two competitive women's soccer teams with stars on both sides. Nova Southeastern Sharks travel up the I-95 to face off against your Rollin Tars. Today has been a picture perfect day for soccer. Game time temperature is a comfortable 70 degrees with a little breeze. Rollins comes in today's game hot like this Florida weather. They're on a two game winning streak. They sit in sixth place in the conference with a 3-2-1 conference record. Overall, they have a 6-4-3 record. Nova, on the other hand, is coming in cold like the Northeast weather. They're on a two-game losing streak. In this week's national polls, they fell from their number 16 spot to not being ranked at all. Even though the Sharks have lost two games in a row, they still sit in third place in the conference with a 5-2 conference record. Their overall season record is 8-2-1. Let me bring in my partner today, Noah Shimami. Noah, what is at stake in today's game? Rollins with the ball, Park, what can she do with it? Taken down, is that a foul? And we get a penalty kick for Rollins. First big play of the game. Star player Park making a play for Rollins, earning a penalty kick. She's had two penalty kicks already on the season and she converted both of them. But before this goes, it looks like we have an injury on Nova. Um, hopefully she's okay. And the reason why that started with that, that resulted in a penalty. Now, this is the big part of the game here. 26 minutes left in the first half. Rollins with the PK, their star player. Kayla Park up the shoot. Can she give Rollins the lead? And it's a save, but she's able to get the follow through. Is it going to be a goal? They're going to count that as a goal. Goal! You're rolling Tars. Kayla Park, number 16, with the goal. She misses her initial penalty kick, is able to follow through and score a goal. No, there used to be a rule that this player who kicked the penalty kick is not allowed to be the first player to touch it. That is not enacted right here, allowing her to get the goal off of her uh, follow through. And, no. and Kira, she... A great Star play Park. by Park. Park. <laughs> this is what zooming, I talk about. I want to see zoom, her run at the zooming defender. Zooming down the middle. Takes it another move in. Left foot shot. Oh, what a pass oh, to Drayton. And it's a goal for the Rollins Tars to go up 3-1. to one. What a play by Park. That is exactly what you want to see. Your star player come from the center midfield, grab the ball, take the fenders on, make a play for your team, and get a goal. That is why her teammates are so happy celebrating. The bench is going wild. The crowd's going wild. You have the goalie coming up here celebrating with Park. She made a superb play and made the unselfish play to pass to her teammate to give her the goal. An extravagant goal. But what was something we talked about earlier in the half, Noah? 
not giving up careless fouls, not giving the opposition a chance to have a set piece, to get some momentum, get a free kick on goal. And what was that? You would have to say that was a needless foul by Rollins there. You would not need to slide the ground, take out the defender, just play defense, stand up, let your defense in the middle of the box uh, be able to uh, get the cross out, give up a free kick. Goalie comes out, is not able to punch the ball away on the free kick. And right place, right time, and, and there grounds could be there for the goal. Here for Correa. Here it is. Sailed in. Good ball. And in. It's in. Good it's ball. in. Myers with the free kick, and the celebration is on. Are you? Are the you? Tars regain the lead, four to three, from a booming kick from Hunter Myers, who does it again. Are you kidding me? Now this game has everything. Topsy turny. Oh, what a free kick. Miscommunication oh. from the Sharks as Polly looking down with her head. The Sharks, after scoring two goals, becomes deflated. <laughs> and on the other end, the Tars look ecstatic. 25 seconds left. Rollins just takes the lead. What a game this yeah. has been, Randy. I'm so happy we get to be here with you to watch. I'm speechless. As an athlete, as a sports fan, this is what you live for, a game like this. Now we have 15. Sharks playing super aggressive. Everybody's up. Eight seconds. And who was that goal by? Kayla Park. We're going to talk about that when this game's over. And as time expires, the Rollins yeah. players and Just unbelievable game by Park. You have to give it up to Nova. What did we say coming out of halftime? Can they show heart? Can they show adversity? Can they come from behind and show that will to be victorious? And they did that. They were down 2-0. They made it 2-1. They Man. were down 3-1. They made it 3-2. They made it 3-3. But you know what? Rollins had that one little bit extra effort. And what did it come down to? Final, final free kick the, the final game. free kick. And making a free kick. We, talk, we said it was a tactical free kick to give it up. Okay. However, it ended up being a bad free kick for them, giving Rollins a chance to score. So there we go. Commentating women's soccer game and women's volleyball game. Loved it. Nothing felt like a chore. Nothing felt like a homework assignment. All the pre-work to get done to make sure that that two hours of commentating the game is perfect. Was it perfect? Of course not. There's so much to work on. Bringing energy 24-7, pronunciations, making sure the commentator or play-by-play -play analysis, whatever position I'm in, we're not speaking on top of each other, uh, continue to get better every day. I dreamt of these opportunities before I came to Dan Patrick every day. The fact I'm getting to live them now is just so rewarding and so humbling. And I'm gonna keep working every day as hard as I can to get better and uh, make these opportunities worth it. Comment your thoughts. Did you like this? Did you not like it? Did you like seeing all the background work? Do you wanna see more highlights next time? What can I improve on? What did I do well? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Of course, please subscribe here to Randy Silver TV. We put out videos every Monday in this vlog series, Becoming Sportscaster. But I have videos coming out every day just around sports, previews, reviews, analysis, and so much more. Until next Monday in the vlog series, thank you for watching. And that's the show. Randy, out.